Hello, in this Visual Basic programming tutorial, I am going to show you classes. This is just going to be a simple example. Over the next few videos, I'll show you all of the different little things that you can do with a class. So first of all, what is a class? So a class is a way of, you know, essentially grouping together variables, grouping together functions and subs. And the reason you would want to do this is if you have something let's say let's call it an entity that has you know some set functionality and you know or you have a good idea that you're probably going to need to let's say have multiple instances of the entity let me use a game as an example so if you have a racing game and you have cars in there and let's say you have 10 cars 10 players each car is, you know, has basic properties. It has, you know, the actual car itself, so like a 3D model. It has a location somewhere in on the map. It has a speed, you know, with maybe, you know, a max speed and let's say current speed. It has potentially damage as well, so how much damage it's taken. And all of those things are actually common in that the way they work will be the same in each car. So instead of you know for 10 cars you know duplicating the code for you know being able to you know move the car so it's some sort of move function 10 times and managing 10 functions and then having 10 different variables that you have to manually code yourself for each car for in terms of let's say the speed and the free model they slowed in and maybe even damage you can create a class that has all of this common functionality together and then you can just create instances and as many instances as you want of that class. It'd be best if I just dive right in and show you. Okay, so to create a class, you just use the keyword class, then you name it something. So we're gonna name it car. So we'll just use that example. And it needs to end with end class. So in here, you can have variables and you can have functions and subs. So let's take a look at that basically now. So let's create a couple of variables. So let's do public. So you need to put some sort of scope here. So we're going to call it public. So public, and we are going to have, now you just essentially create your variable as you would normally. So public replaces another keyword dim. So public, and I'm going to call it speed as int with integer sorry and we'll have public and we'll have let's say damage as let's put this one as a double and now we're going to have a couple of methods so we'll have some methods so we'll have a method for two so again, you can do functions or subs. I'm just going to do a sub, but the process is exactly the same. So sub, and I'm going to say move car. I'll just call it move. And we can specify how much you want to move it by. So by val, and I'll say amount as integer. And this would essentially just modify the, actually no, I'll, I'll call this, you know, damage. So damage car. And instead of amount of fine, so in here now, I'm gonna say damage. So this right here equals itself minus the amount. like so and so in here we can create as many cars as we want to create the car you do dim because it's essentially a variable you do dim the name of the car so let's call it, call it c1 as and then the name of the class that's car equals new car so this is just invoking the constructor so that is something we haven't created yet, and I'm going to cover that in a separate video. So for now, just bear with me. And we can do C1, 
dot we can initially set the values of let's say speed so speed equals 100 and c1 dot damage initially actually instead of calling this damage i'll call this health and i will also call this one health and uh, let's need to replace it here so there we go health is initially equal to 100 that's pretty cool i'll change the speed so it's something different so i'll just put 60. and now if we were to do console.write line and if we do c1 dot speed i'm gonna we'll get a value of 60 so that's pretty cool and now let's you know damage the health as well so what i'll do i'll copy that i'll print out health and I'll actually print it out again, but before the second time, I'm gonna damage the car. I'm gonna do c1.damage car, and I'll just put some sort of value here. Let's say a couple 14, so 14 damage. Now if I run it, we get 60, 100, so the health is initially 100. After damage, it is now 86. You know, that's pretty cool. My thinking, okay, still can't see the immense benefit of not having a class so let me show you now so if i create another car so c2 as car equals new car it's just the same procedure as before for creating a car so now if i do the same thing set the speed i'll set the speed but i'll actually set this up Let's say the speed is the same for both cars. Health is the same for both cars. Now let me print out the speed and health for both cars. And let me print out the health again for both cars. So very similar, but we're just doing the exact same thing for both cars. The only one thing I'm not going to do for the second car is damage it. So let's see what happens. So we get 60, 100. So the speed and health is printed out, 60, 100. So it's like, okay, they're the same. But then once we damage car one, car one has a health of 86. Car two, health is unchanged because car two has its own set of variables and methods from this class, but they function the same way. So that is fantastic. If we were to duplicate this line again and let's say call it C3, we would have all of this. If we update the car class with you know new variables, new functions, subs, that sort of stuff, new algorithms, then all of that gets propagated into each car. And, not, and you might be thinking, okay, why would we want a method like this when we could just you know access health and just take away I don't know 14 ourselves? One of the great things that you could do in here, and I want you to do this as an extra task is have some sort of if statement that checks if the health you know after damage goes below zero because you know at zero the car should either explode or it should start working zero should be the lowest health that you can you know get so that's almost like you know being dead for example and you could have an if statement that checks that and if it's below zero it just sets it to zero and instead of you having to duplicate that if statement again and again every time you want to damage the car somewhere in your code it just automatically does the check so i'm going to do that as an extra task thanks for watching and i look forward to seeing you in the next programming video